Hey, welcome to episode four of How to Play Kill Team with BFS Wargaming. I'm Patrick. So today we're going to be talking about um, the psychic phase and also the shooting phase. So we're going to go on straight in and we'll start talking about the psychic phase. So there are only two factions at the moment that can use the psychic phase, which are Grey Knights and Thousand Suns. So they both have access to the same power, which is Cybolt. So you have to be within 18 inches and visible to an enemy model. And then you have to roll 2d6 and on those 2d6 you have to get a 5 or over to make that um, manifest. And then you will do, if it's over a 5 and up to a 10, you will do one mortal wound. And a mortal wound is something that you cannot roll a saving throw against. And then if you rolled uh, 11 or over, so 11 or 12, then you will do D3 mortal wounds. So you have to roll a D3 and see how many mortal wounds you do. So with these, if it's Grey Knights and Thousand Sons are playing each other, they actually get a chance to deny the witch. So I don't think any other factions have that power at the moment. Um, and deny the witch means that if the, they successfully cast Cybolt, then you can then roll and you have to get higher than what they they rolled and then you can deny that which nullifies the power and it means it didn't go off. So the shooting phase. Now the shooting phase is, like we said before, in the movement phase, if you had any ready models, then they fight first. So you almost have two rounds of shooting. So the player that has the initiative will use their ready models, uh, one ready model first, then the player that uh, goes second will use their choose their next model to go and then it will go back and forth until all of the ready models have shot. Then you'll go on to the unready models who are available to shoot, so ones you've moved or ones you may have advanced that have an assault weapon where they can use it even though they've advanced. So once you have done the ready, you move on to the normal model. So we're going to go into the shooting and how it works. So with shooting, you need to roll to hit. Okay, so you have to check what weapon you've got and how many dice you, you use to um, roll. So for instance, if this weapon or this weapon is uh, a rapid fire one gun, but because it's rapid fire, if it's within half range, you get to roll uh, double the amount of dice. So it would be two dice. So you'd roll the two dice and you check the on the data sheet, the ballistic skill. So I know the ballistic skill of this Necron Warrior is three plus. So I need to roll two threes to be able to hit. Now, in Kill Team, for instance, if this Necron here is shooting at this cultist here and he is obscured, so he can't see all of his body. You need to be able to see all of the body. The guns and weapons don't count, but the body does. So if you can't even see a foot or a hand, that model is counted as being obscured, which means you get a minus one to hit. So instead of him hitting on threes, he will be then hitting on fours, okay? So if this model was obscured and over 12 inches, like this one over here, then that means if it's out of half range, so the range of this gun is 24 inches, if it's over 12 inches, that means that you're gonna get another minus one to hit. So he's obscured and he's out of half range, so that means it'll be minus two. So therefore, instead of hitting on threes, he'll then be hitting on fives, okay? Because there's two um, modifiers, minus modifiers to that attack. So this is where you need to be clever on who you target. So someone like this guy in the middle, who's out in the open, he's not obscured, he's within half range, that means that I'll be getting two dice and they'll be both be hitting on threes. So it quite easily, this is why terrain matters so much, especially a lot of the little scatter terrain. This matters because you only need to be hiding a toe or a hand or a foot and your model will be counted as obscured and will make it that much harder to hit. So once you've done the hit rolls, um, let's say I roll two, and I'm trying to hit this guy and I need to hit him on fours, I missed. So that means you move on, so that model has, has fired. So you move on to then um, the enemy model, they choose one to fire, 
if they um, miss, they say, and then it goes back to me. So I'm gonna fire up this guy, so I'm gonna be hitting on threes. So I've got two hits, a five and a six, okay? So what this now means is I need to, I need to wound, okay? So once you've hit, you then move on to the wound roll. So you have to check your weapon strength. So this will be, again be on your data sheet. Um, it's all of these um, stats and everything else is in the core manual, so it's all there, you can look it all up. I won't go through every single one because it would, we'd be here all day and you'll obviously learn these as you go. So I know that the strength of this weapon is four and the toughness of this guy is three. So if your strength is higher than the toughness of the model you're shooting at, then um, it's threes that you'll be wounded on. If it was double the toughness, so if I had a strength six weapon, then I'd be hitting on twos, okay? If his toughness was higher than mine, then I'd be hitting on, um, or if it was the same, I'd be, hit, I'd be wounded on fours. If it was higher, I'd be wounded on five or sixes, and if it was double, so say my weapon was strength three and he was toughness six, then I'd be hitting on sixes. So, and a one is always a fail. So, I've got two dice and I need to be wounded on threes, which one of them wounds. Now, you go on to the saving roll, okay? So, you check his save. So, I know that this cultist save is um, minus, is, sorry, a six up, okay? So, he needs to roll a six on the dice to save, but, you need to check and check your weapon's armor penetration, okay? So it will say next to the weapon, it will say strength, and then it will say AP, and then um, it will say damage, okay? So the AP you need to check. So I know that these weapons, uh, Gauss flags, are minus one. So I know now he does not get a save, okay? So it doesn't matter, because his save is now a seven up, which you can't get on a D6. So therefore, we then go into the injury roll. Now, the injury roll is specific to kill team. So what's gonna happen is the attacker rolls the injury roll. Um, oh, sorry, I have to first, these are one damage weapons. So again, checking the stats of the weapon. It's one damage and he has one wound. So he's gonna take him down to zero. So then we know we've got to do an injury roll. Once they go down to zero wounds, because some models have more than one wound. So we're gonna take him down to zero wounds, so we need to do an injury roll. So on a one, two, or three, he takes a flesh wound, and on a four, five, or six, he's taken out of action and taken off the board. So let's see what I roll. So I roll a five, so that means he is taken out of action. Now, if I'd rolled a one, two, or three, he would have been given a flesh wound. So to put a flesh wound marker next to him, now what this flesh wound means is that he then gets minus one to hit when he's either shooting or in close combat. Okay, so he's wounded. He's probably taken a shot to the leg and he's hobbling about a bit. It's gonna affect the way he shoots. It's gonna affect the way he fights in close combat. So also what will happen is if he is shot at again, when it comes to the injury roll, he will have a minus one to his um, injury roll. So instead of me rolling, um, a one, two, or three, he'd get a flesh wound. He'd only get a flesh wound on a one or two, and then a three, four, five, or six, he would be taken out of action. I hope that's uh, clear. Obviously, you can read these in the rules in the core manual. It's all laid out there. There's a table with minus modifiers, plus modifiers as well, um, and you can have a look at that. Okay, so other things to mention about the injury roll. Um, as you can see here, there's the plus and minus modifiers um, that can come up. So obviously you have to do an injury roll um, for the psychic phase, the shooting phase, and also the close combat phase. Um, when you do when you do take a model down to zero wounds. Um, so the first thing is to mention is that the attacker always does the injury roll. So if you were to take a wound, for instance, say it was something that came from the terrain, then the controller of the model um, would take the injury roll. But if you are attacking someone, um, the attacker always does the injury roll. Other than that is to talk about damage. So if you are firing a one weapon damage gun, so, um, sorry, a one damage weapon. So then what you do is if that 
say you get fire three shots from that gun and like you get three hits and three wounds and they they don't save only one of them is counted because it's just a one damage so the other two are just disregarded you just do one injury roll as normal as if you're only firing one shot so the other thing to look at is if it's a for instance let's say it's a three damage weapon okay so you fire one shot and it's three damage and they fail all their saving throws um, it's three damage and that means that the attacker rolls three injury roll dice and they pick the highest okay so there's a higher chance that you're going to take that model out of action i hope that's clear um, I think we've covered most things to do um, with the injury roll and uh, things that might crop up, but obviously the rules are there, as you can see in the book, um, and you can read through them. So thanks for watching episode four of How to Play Kill Team with BFS Wargaming. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give us a like and subscribe. The links for all of the um, other videos will be in the description, along with 4TK Gaming, where you can get mad gaming terrain from. Um, and... Check the others out and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, bye-bye.